to oneness the unity with the mirror of ourselves. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, lovemaking. Can you read it again? The portal to oneness through unity with the mirror of ourselves. Yes. Um, we have many uh, so-called portals. Uh, what is a portal? It's basically just a, a, a way to access to a part of ourselves that is non-physical and has a, a wider perspective of uh, the physical experience and the non-physical experience. So we have, um, in my life, I, I identify, I sense different portals. Uh, one of them is, uh, appear to be lovemaking. Uh, because um, when we uh, make love, uh, basically we uh, we are um, we our relationship with our lover it's an, uh, it's our relationship to ourself mirror it back. That's why it's so valuable to have a relationship in many ways because we have a chance, uh, we created uh, a chance to see more in depth who we are, what we are, how we respond to certain things and that and that's, will create an opportunity for us to uh, remember more and more what we are. So it's another device. It's not, it's not necessary, it's not um, uh, the only way. Uh, is not uh, a must to have a relationship, but it's one of the wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, there are many others. Uh, so when we make love, um, um, we create a, a, an energy field uh, that uh, break break through all our egos or our. Um, um, yeah, ego-related uh, perception, and we basically—it's uh, another way to step into stillness. So, by making love, in my case, to a woman, to a woman that I love, because if I don't love her, then we are not talking about making love. We are talking about something else. But when the love between uh, two people is pure enough to create a, a unity that engages us also as a phys at, at the physical level, um, we create a vortex of energy uh, which dissipate uh, the illusion of separation. And once we are in that energy field, we uh, can uh, uh, we we have access uh, to. Um, Informations and two experiences that are uh, much, much broader and much, much more uh, in integrity with uh, with um, with our uh, true uh, identity, with our true self. And so, every time we make love, we have an opportunity to tap into that energy and to download informations as much as we do that when we uh, connect with stillness, when we connect with our imagination, when we collect, connect with nature, uh, when we uh, connect with the creativity. Uh, these are all different portals and love making is also a creative process. In fact, it's so creative that uh, if we choose so, it creates life. So, 
And so in many ways, uh, love making is also um, uh, purifying, right? It, 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 it is, it actually requires that you are, are pure. So that's the biggest challenge uh, that we are having because we have been um, uh, bombarded by so many disinformation about what sex is, what lovemaking is, what uh, with, we are completely compu confused and lost. And so most of the time that we say we are making love, uh, we are making love, in reality we are not making love, we are kind of having sex. And having sex, uh, there's nothing wrong with having sex. However, having sex, uh, it, it engage you at the, at, at the mind level, where I, uh, I get uh, um, an, a, a sexual excitement by uh, your resembles, for example, by your, your lips, uh, your breast, or your beautiful shapes and form, uh, your skin, uh, your smell. There's nothing wrong with that again, but um, and that uh, could, could be a, the first trigger uh, to uh, come close to the opposite sex or you have the same sex if you are homosexual. Um, but uh, that's not the love making I'm talking about. At a certain point we will uh, uh, enter a connection that will transcend all these factors. They are beautiful if they are there and they have to be, they have to be, they, are, they have their importance. But at a certain point, we need to transcend them. Uh, and so when we are uh, sexually uh, uniting ourselves, uh, we do it from a state of no mind and uh, absolute 100% love, pure love feeling, where there is not, uh, there are all those uh, distractions that uh, the matrix has created about sex uh, which express uh, with pornography, with um, how the uh, how we have to appear, and, uh, and this uh, fake uh, sexuality, sensuality that the movies uh, shows, uh, that uh, the fashion shows, uh, uh, and then um, and also the you know how your body should look like. So all those things. We, which are not, there's nothing wrong with that, but it, they can be supportive. But at a certain point, we want to transcend that and get into a pure love energy field. And that's love making. Now we are entering a place that can be uh, very scary for uh, most of us because it implies being 100% vulnerable, 100% naked, 100% open, uh, so you let go of the concern of what is the outcome, uh, is, is, is she liking me, or is she, uh, am, am I a good lover, uh, how am I doing this, the position, and the, <laughs> how big is uh, my tools, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how uh, my appearance is, you know, is, is right, is wrong, we transcend all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We let it go uh, because now we build a, a love between each, each other that uh, is, is based on 100% trust. So we do not need anymore, um, and also it's based on 100% self-love because if I don't love myself, I won't be able to love you. It, it just doesn't go, it, I won't be able. So we reach a point of self-love and uh, where even what I just said, trust is, even trust is not needed anymore. Because even trust, trust is needed when there is a concern. And so I'm concerned, so well, okay, I'm concerned, but I trust you. But if I love myself 100%, I don't need to trust, trust you because you can be betray me, but to me it doesn't mean anything. I just observe you and say, oh, that's interesting, she's uh, acting like that. But I don't take it in, I don't get hurt. Right? So we are now uh, shifting into the real love, uh, which is not coming from neediness. 
the, the, the big uh, sponsorization of love, this big uh, agenda, propaganda of love that comes from the media, comes from the movies, comes from most of the, of the information that are out there, are um, um, sponsoring a, a love that comes from neediness. So uh, people, uh, when they say, I love you, they are meaning, I need you. So I need you to be happy because I am not happy. Uh, and so I project in you uh, a, a, a fantasy and this fantasy is going to make me happy. It's going to fill all the gaps inside myself. And, and you do the same to me. Uh, and, and now we are in love, right? We are not lovers, we are in love. In love is a projection. I project in you my best expectations. I have a list of expectations here. You have your list of expectations. And basically we agree that uh, we play the part. And that's a beautiful experience. Uh, I've been in love in my, uh, many times. Uh, but, uh, and it was a wonderful experience and, uh, and it's a very important experience. And, uh, and you don't need to uh, repress, just allow it to fully experience it because it will take, take you to uh, an awareness that it is an illusion uh, and eventually you won't need it, that illusion anymore. It will have served its uh, scope uh, because it, by experiencing then, that over and over, uh, you will get to the point where you understand I don't need to experience that anymore because I understand that um, there was a projection and now I am uh, understanding that um, I have to fill up my, my emptiness. Uh, nobody can make me happy. Uh, happiness is my uh, responsibility. Once you turn into that, you shift into a situation where uh, all of a sudden uh, you become responsible. Have the ability to respond um, from your centeredness. So at that point, uh, the love as neediness start to fade out, fade out, fade out until you get to a point when uh, you love someone, you need nothing. You don't need anything. And that's the ultimate love. That's the ultimate. That's the love uh, which is equal to freedom. So when I say I love you now, I say you are free. You are free to be all you want to be. Good, bad, nice, ugly, beautiful. You can stay with me. Don't stay with me. Sleep with me. Sleep with somebody else. It doesn't matter. I love you. Right. Now, once I reach that point. And for some, and, and some, and I manage to attract a person that is in the same frequencies, which I do because the, money, the, the, the life is a mirror. So it is always a response to your vibrational offer. So once I am at that level of self loving, most likely I will attract a person that is in the same vibrational offer. Now we have the ability to be really lovers, meaning that we can dance together, the dance of love, uh, but we have no conditions on how the other person is dancing, how much is dancing with me, and for how long is going to dance with me, and and how she looks when she dances with me, and all that. It's just, we can just completely get lost into the dance. The idea of time and space disappear. We are not anymore concerned about how long is our relationship. It doesn't matter. It can last one moment or one lifetime or anything in between uh, because uh, true lovers uh, are not concerned about time. They are not concerned about, about space. They are just concerned about the dance. So in that moment when we achieve that and we make love, the love making creates a vortex that takes us to um, informations that are very, very, um, that comes from a, the expression of ourselves that is very, very um, high. Uh, so basically, we go, we connect to source, and we are source. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, what I mean when uh, uh, lovemaking is a portal 
uh, uh, to, to the mirror ourselves. Of course, there is much more uh, to these um, topics. It's mm -hmm. a fascinating topic. I'm still learning about it, but um, uh, I think we already cover the basics. Mm -hmm.